Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about tech leads and architects. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how to excel at technic a technical lead role? Also, how to judge if I'm a if I'm the right fit for a technic for being a technical architect? What are the new advances in architecture, and what are the skill set needed to do justice to, to both the ro both roles? For ex uh, in essence, uh, both the tech lead role and the technical architect role. Well, so the common denominator here is that uh, you're in a lead type of position as an architect and as a tech lead, and. Uh, Whenever you go again, like this is just I'm just gonna get it out there immediately. First and foremost, primary thing you need to get really good at is soft skills, people skills. It's the number one thing, and the reason is very simple. We depend uh, this depends a little bit because that's the that's the fluffy part about being an architect or a tech lead or like what does that concretely mean? Because it's a little bit different from company to company. A tech lead can in some companies be just a just the person who is like in charge of the developers in their team, like they're doing all the coding with everybody else. So that's the one I'm gonna go with. But like they're just someone who like set who sets up the meetings and so forth and talks to the stakeholders or so forth but it can also be someone who's a little bit higher than that and basically becomes an architect or vice versa and an architect can be someone who sits with only the like sits with the customers or it can be an internal thing where like they coach different teams or like at the really high level like they might set the entire roadmap for multiple teams etc etc so it, it very much depends but in general terms, let's talk about the tech lead first and foremost. So, soft skills number one for both roles. But the difference between a tech lead and an architect is usually, uh, in my experience at the very least, the level of involvement they have in the work that is going on, like how how high level they are, if that makes sense. So as a tech lead, the skills usually required is that you have a fairly, well, it doesn't have to be a senior profile. You don't have to think that you're gonna be the, you don't have to be the best software developer in the team. You just have to be good enough so like you, that you actually know the daily work. So you understand like what is the stack that you're using, how's the team doing, how they're like, and uh, so you, uh, I think the best way to describe it is imagine that you've been working as a software developer for long enough that you yourself can sit there and you can do all the work and you can do all these things in many cases. You're not necessarily always the expert of every area within your team, like there are different people who know different things, but you're good enough to know what they're all saying, what their needs are, what they're working on, and you could take over a story and start working on it, and you've just reached that point where you want to progress one level up and now be more administrative. And that is where like th this whole thing comes in. So like the the skill set that is needed is usually that of a software developer, and then on top of that administrative skills like basic and the, the people skills people skills with admin administrative skills that's the thing that you need as uh, as a tech lead, uh, as a tech lead in my experience and a lot of software developers who have a few years and are organically caring and you know have, have an interest in uh, in doing this sort of thing to sit in meetings and manage the stakeholders and talk about like how the team is doing, what's the schedule and so forth and so forth, if there are any delays, risks, so forth uh, and plan out future work they're, they're pretty much ready immediately it's not, the, the leap from software developer to a tech lead is usually not that uh, it's not a hard thing to, trans to transition into if you have the people skills because that is like fundamentally the thing that you will need. You, it's fairly easy to to learn agile practices and work practice and all that stuff if you have an interest into it. I mean, if you've already learned how to be a software developer, learning how to set up a Kanban board or working in, in accordance with Scrum or whatever, it's not some or learning basic leadership. It's not a difficult thing. And trust me, there are more people who are doing that in a poor way than there are people who are doing it in a well way. Like most people are completely average people without any like super advanced leadership skills or insights or wisdom. They're they're just uh, they're just transitioning into that role and doing just as well as most people with basic soft skills would. 
As for the architect, uh, it's a little bit different. Usually what I find is that for an architect role, depending on what type of architect you're going to be now, because that's the thing, right? You can be m multiple types of architects. So like the traditional, like holistic, I know everything, I like work at the highest levels, are usually, it's once again, it's going to be people skills first and foremost, and then the rest of it as a, is kind of going to come down to what area you're going to be responsible for. If you're holistically responsible for everything, well, then having a fairly strong understanding of all the tooling that you're using in your company is a very good thing, and usually there are a few things that are relevant for an architect in my experience. So if you're going to do all of it, it's going to be front-end work, like knowing about React, Angular, etc, etc, knowing how like the different tool systems and so forth work, in, like the ecosystem in front-end, which is a fairly big area, so it's, it's a big undertaking to know all of that stuff, and takes quite a lot of time to get really good at. Uh, you don't, and that's the thing, right? You don't have to be a master of all of this stuff, you, but you need to know about it. And then you have the backend, like a backend languages, databases, etc., etc. And knowing how all of that works, that's something that you're going to have to learn. You're basically going to have to be a full stack developer, with one more addition in in many cases. And I think that this is probably the most important area for an architect in many cases, which is the infrastructure, cloud solutions, and so forth, because that is usually where most of the planning is going to go in like you when you work as an architect most of what you focus on is the actual like at the you're working with things at the system level and at the system level the front end and the back end like the actual application itself is I, i'm not going to go too far but in many cases it's more of a formality if that makes sense to you it's usually the case where if it's not for a very specific feature, you're trying to optimize for something or so forth, most of what you're doing is that you're planning out the interaction between different systems and usually in a distributed system. And you're usually looking at services and maintenance and, uh, and the operations part of how everything works. And then of course the business requirements, like how, how, are, how is the business requirements from external companies or other stakeholders or in between teams and so forth, how is the workflow going to work between them? And that comes. that's much more about the, well, the architecture, that's basically what it is. Like that's more in line with um, the sort of, uh, sort of work that you're most likely going to do if you're going to be an architect. Yeah, unless you're, like, I mean, because I, guys, I, that's what I just, for completeness sake, I want you to know that I've met people who are front-end architects. And like so, the, that's why I was trying. I'm trying to give you a more holistic picture. You, just because I say architect, that doesn't mean operations. Traditionally, it's more oriented around business requirements, operations, security, workflow, how to integrate with like logging solutions and third parties, and all of this good stuff. Uh, but you can be like a front-end architect or a back-end architect or something like that. So what I want you to take away from this is that usually the, 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 if you want to be a tech lead or an architect, the common denominator is people skills. You will, you will spend more time talking to people and going to meetings and planning out work than you will spend coding. Uh, tech lead is usually closer to the actual development work and in many cases they're another developer, they're just slightly above the others and like going to more meetings and so forth and so the skills required for that role is usually that of any of the software developers who are within the team whatever expectations you have you might be the front-end developer the full stack developer or the back-end developer or ops person and whatever uh, you're just a developer or you're a developer with soft skills and administrative skills for a as an architect usually it's more high level than that uh, where you spend most of your time in meetings planning out work you uh, you do almost no coding in many cases you're more about informing people talking to stakeholders talking uh, planning out like team splits or inter integrations to uh, other systems or new customers and how that's going to fit into your system. So understanding everything at a high level 
is your primary focus and that in many cases includes knowing how your front end looks so like what the capacity like what tools are you using in the front end for the server side language what are you using what databases are you using what considerations do you need there but a lot of a hefty amount is also focused on infrastructure and architecture at the in cloud solutions and things like that because that's usually where most of the planning go, uh, goes in when you're trying to orchestrate the entire system because in many cases it's not super relevant when you're orchestrating how the system is going to look as it continues growing what specific front-end framework you're using or what specific uh, back-end language you're using it's much more about okay this system this piece of the system is doing that how does that connect into this system over here and how is that fitting into our security strategy and so forth. Uh, that is in many cases uh, the role of an architect. Have a great day.